uh, it should not be uh, the, the first place of recourse for anybody who is ill. But because we, because we lack a good primary health care, uh, matters that ought not to get to, even to the hospitals are now getting to the teaching hospitals. But the thing is, the focus there doesn't seem to be an urgency. Our health care is really in a very terrible state. And it doesn't look like there's actually a very concrete plan in place to ensure that this, uh, the, the system is revived. We're not even talking insurance, for instance. What is happening in that area? No, of course, we're talking. don't forget that when we came here, there was the NHIS, <clears throat> which we inherited, and we are trying to make sure that it works. You know, the NHIS we have today probably covers only about less than 17% of the population, and we're trying to expand its scope. This is they do take time because, again, it is a function of um, many other things. Now, the NHIS is supposed to be contributory. In other words, I choose a medical, you know, you choose a, what you call a, yeah, I, I forgot, I, I think you call it a, like a medical facilitator, and then you. HMO? Pay, but, but yes, HMO. And then there's an agreement between the HMO and you. And then you pay something, and at the end of the month, if uh, any time that there's a problem with you know in the family or with you, because you have paid your dues and you have paid your 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 your, <clears throat> your, your, your like a premium, and then the the, the 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 HMO takes care of you. But we are trying to expand this from I think it's less than 17 percent that we met to include more people. You know, in the I, I, I have to say that, you know, when government says we're trying to do something, I mean, for instance, now with the ease of doing business, we can see that there's a lot of focus there. The government is really, you know, trying its best to ensure that things are a lot easier. We hear on a daily basis the plans or weekly or monthly basis, as it were, the plans that they're putting in place to ensure that, you know, the ease of business is a lot easier. They really want to move up that ranking. But in terms of health care, are we giving it as much attention? Do we think it deserves as, as much attention I think it, as the attention <clears throat> we're given, for instance, say, ease of doing business? I'm happy that you have mentioned the, the issue of ease of doing business. And you admitted that, yes, the government is uh, uh, making, uh, you know, as making a lot of uh, <clears throat> traction, you know, uh, which I'll come to later. But yes, in the area of health, it's like I say, it's both state and federal. Now, for instance, look at the last, you know, um, outbreak of meningitis. It took place in states. And those states had responsibility to report to the federal government. We never got that report about three months later. But three months time, later? Yes, yes, yes. Well, we see, between the time when the first, you know, uh, casualty was recorded and the time it was reported, it was about three months. So now, 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 what I'm saying is that, you see, when you talk about health care system, which, please be specific, which is the area that the federal government needs to do and what the states need to do. But I think health is more of a state matter than a federal government matter. Because, like, apart from the tertiary university, you know, the tertiary institution we're talking about, and then in the area of, you know, preventive, you know, uh, medicine. But then if you do not inform government at the center, that is an outbreak of meningitis. How do we? Know? So we know? when we see that type of lapse, that a state government, for instance, I, I understand that yes, in certain areas, the strength of how well the federal government would have done, uh, you know, would come from you know how well the states are doing. But when we see that sort of lapse in you know in, in the state, for instance, who, who did not report a case of meningitis that eventually took the lives of over 300 people and was threatening to spread to other states. Did we, for instance, convoke an emergency meeting? Of course, it was done immediately. You see, the National, uh, the, the national, uh, the national Economic Council meeting, it was addressed, you know, very comprehensively. You, you see, Nigeria is in the meningitis, uh, you know, belt. And it's something that we should know, we should expect that at a particular time, of the year, but is is that there must be prompt reporting, and then there must also be the vaccines available. Unfortunately, the 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 the, the institutions making these vaccines were closed in 1990 for you know uh, 
for upgrading, and since then they have not been reopened. I, I said the whole log is a whole very complex story, and this government is now trying to, you know, revive those, you know, institutions. There's no way we can continue to rely on foreign aid, you know, to get vaccines for meningitis or that. These are part of the challenges that we are, you know, we are facing. It's not we're not blaming it on any past government. We're saying that is the truth. That these decisions were closed as far back as 1990, and nobody thought about them. You've listened to the uh, many complaints, uh, just about in every sector of the economy, with uh, not very pleasant reports about what the government has been able to achieve, and you don't agree what with that. Particular? You don't agree with that. You have said that the 2017 budget holds the key to what you call a turning point in the history of this government, and that from 2017 and the budget will begin to see meaningful changes. I said that. Oh, no, it's there. It's there in the papers. It's everywhere on no, the internet. Okay. Well. I'm, 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 I thought the you said I said it here now. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, okay. Your government is no, actually Of course, okay. yes, yes, that's true. Give me specifics. What are we expecting to see? What will be done differently? What will be the results when we implement the 2017 budget? Jim, I've just told you now. I said as 2017 budget is based on the economic recovery and growth plan that it aims to achieve three things one build a competitive economy invest in the people and thirdly intends to of course diversify the economy and i now say that it is also in on five pillars one improvement on transportation infrastructure food and agricultural security power and energy sufficiency, the um, 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 providing an every environment for the micro, small and medium, you know, uh, medium uh, yes, I mean. uh, inter uh, enterprises and also, you know, improving and managing the microeconomic uh, situation. And that is what we should expect in 2017. Now, when you look at two areas we're focusing on, one is that we are blocking all leakages. And the efficiency, put the efficiency unit of Ministry of Finance and presidential initiative on continuous auditing, we have achieved results. Savings. You know, we pick with PICA, for instance, today, we've been able to see, to, to save about 198 billion naira from payroll alone. The efficiency unit will be able to save about 15 billion naira in sitting allowances and travels. And this is what we should continue to see. But the key is that we are focused.